on and double fest. Get next, please protect. Get a brace and find your place. Hello, everyone. My name is Dean. Let's talk crypto. This is where you subscribe for daily Bitcoin updates and technical analysis. We track the price of Bitcoin as a proxy for the cryptocurrency markets at large. Today is August 7th, 2022. And the question is, will Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency markets finally break out of their 50 to 90 day resistances in Bitcoin? We have a 50 to 90 day resistance that we've been under for quite some time, 50 days, okay? And in altcoins, this has been, like, let's take Dota, for instance, an 88-day resistance, 87-day resistance, okay? Question is, will we finally break out, okay? And what will that yield? What can we expect to the upside if we do break out to the upside? That's number one. Number two, is there any historical precedent for Bitcoin doing uh consolidating for you know more than a month under a resistance what did it look like after it broke out all right that's something we're going to look at and finally what are the serious players the bitfinex longs and shorts what are they doing okay what are people with big money trading on these really you know serious exchanges doing what are they thinking right? What are open interests like? If all of that interests you, then watch until the very end. It's getting started on the daily time frame, looking at Bitcoin. And as I said, you have this resistance between 24 and 25K that we've been under for 50 days. And it's very likely that this pattern that you can see, it looks like a cup and handle. It looks that it's likely to break up, right? Not down, up, all right? These are typically bullish patterns, right? These cup and handle patterns. We have many reasons why it's likely to break up. If you turn on the EMAs, you can see we're being EMA squeezed between the yellow EMA, which is the 21 exponential moving average and the 55 exponential moving average, which is the blue one, right? And we're coming into that squeeze from an uptrend. So it's likely to squeeze up, right? Kind of like a bull flag would squeeze up. Also, if you do consider this a type of cup and handle pattern, right? So the technical target of a cup and handle pattern, let's draw it again, would be the height of the cup, right? So let's take the height of the cup from the low to the neckline and superimpose that height from the neckline, right? And it takes you right into this next zone of significant support and resistance, which is at 30K, which is what we expect. Okay, so that's all, you know, something that we've looked at before. This is what we're expecting. We've just been getting a lot of consolidation under this 2425k level and that is interesting and it typically means that price is gearing for a big move to the upside because what happens you have to understand fundamentally what's going on when price is consolidating you're you're consolidating meaning you're collecting buyers you're collecting buyers and you're collecting also short sellers right so two things are happening. If the price is indeed to move up, you're collecting buyers and you're collecting short sellers. You're collecting buyers to give you the fuel to move impulsively in that direction where you want to uh, reverse the trend, right? Because this is, is effectively a trend reversal, right? Coming from lots of downward price action, making a rounded bottom, going into a new trend. So it kind of has to take some time. Now, you're also collecting short sellers. What does that mean? People betting on the price to go down. They have their bets here. And once they get hit, meaning once they get squeezed out of their positions, either via stops or liquidations, they also add fuel to the fire to move up. Okay, so this is what we're seeing in Bitcoin, as well as the rest of the cryptocurrency market. As I said, Dodo is 
an altcoin that is also in this similar situation. You don't have a cup and handle here. Here, it's more like an inverse head and shoulder. You have your left shoulder, your head, and your right shoulder, and you're at the neckline and you've been there for 87 days. Again, you're collecting buyers, you're collecting buyers and short sellers, right? People who bet on the price to go in the opposite direction. Once it breaks this, expect an explosion of price action, okay? Last one I wanna look at as an altcoin is Shiba Inu, just because the price action here is a quintessential inverse head and shoulders, right? You you have an inverse head and shoulders in a lot of altcoins in the market, but I think this one's particularly nice where once again, you're looking at what is likely to be a bullish pattern and a breakout to the upside. Now, do we have any precedent for Bitcoin being in these situations consolidating under resistance for um, months at a time. And we indeed do, okay? And to, to show you that, I'm gonna go into my larger term Bitcoin chart, okay? And I'm going to just show you, for those of you not subscribed, this is, let's go on the weekly time frame. This is my chart of Bitcoin from inception okay this is basically how i've mapped bitcoin from zero up until where we're at okay and i have us in a minor wave two right pivoting into a minor wave three impulse okay so that's interesting because back in 2019 while it wasn't the same exact thing right it wasn't the same exact thing because this was in the midst of a flat correction. Now let's go into the daily time frame. Stay on the logarithmic scale. Right? And here's the point of interest, right? Back in 2019, we had done something similar, okay? It's not exactly the same, not a one-to-one -one comparison. Never have we been in a minor wave two correction leading into a minor wave three, right? That's a unique thing, right? And, you know, there's a reason why we, we name it so precisely because you don't, you know, when you're, you're counting degrees in Elliott Wave, these are specific, precise moves and uh, positions or situations that price is in. This was a little different. This was an intermediate wave to flat correction. Okay, so let's just zoom out for a second. You can see that this is a very clear flat correction, flat correction, yeah? An A, B, C with your impulse or your capitulation of the flat correction occurring in March of 2020. Now, I'm talking about this inflection of this A wave, this three wave structure into this B wave, another three wave, three wave structure. This was similar to what we're currently experiencing in that we came from a big bearish move, right? In Bitcoin, we were in a 450 day trend, right? To the downside. It wasn't a, a you know, exclusively downwards price action, but it's a, it's a corrective trend, right? So Bitcoin, we had a corrective trend that lasted about 450 days. Here you have a corrective trend that lasts about 350 days, okay? So some similarities. Also, once you get down to the bottom, you immediately start a, a consolidation reversal pattern or an AB base, right? So that we know is a reversal pattern. And here you have one, two, three, four, five waves, right? Your A wave, so remember this position right here, okay, your A wave, your initial break of structure targets wave four of the previous trend. That's what we expect, okay? So this is one degree, so your A wave and your B wave, your counter, that's one degree of your AB base, okay? And this is one, two, three, one, two, three, two degrees of your AB base. This is your AB base, that's your rounded bottom, that's your reversal pattern at the bottom of this trend, okay? That all lasted from the orthodox low uh, on November 25th, 2018, all the way 
to January of 2019, that all lasted 65 days. Okay, so that's comparable. Here, right now, we're talking about a 50-day uh, consolidation reversal pattern in Bitcoin under resistance for 50 days. Here, that consolidation reversal pattern lasted, lasted 69 days. However, you then were still under resistance once you started your impulse. And kind of like what we're doing now, we started our impulse, but under resistance. And you get a five-wave move, which is your, your one wave, right? Your first Elliott wave comes in five waves, and then your retracement, kind of like what we got here, right? So I just annotated that five wave move and then that two wave retracement and still you're under resistance when you start your wave three and your wave three starts in this leading diagonal where you get a uh, wave one two three four and five kind of concerted you get those leading diagonals typically when you start an impulse uh and it's a new impulse and you're coming from a larger trend, right? And you're reversing that trend. So this is what you see here. And for this whole time, right? From the orthodox low all the way to um, April of 19, right? When Bitcoin was still under that $4,200 resistance, that was 127 days of price action under resistance you got concerted, stunted, muted price action until you broke that resistance, right? And again, at the end, when it was all said and done, it was 127 days of resistance that you broke when you broke the $4,200 Bitcoin level and you got a daily candle of 27%, right? You just pumped up and out of it and you never really looked back from there. Now, I don't think that you're t you're necessarily going to get the same type of price action. I can expect 20 to 30% up uh, in Bitcoin when we break resistance. However, what I don't expect is for us not to retest crucial resistance that was broken. The reason we didn't completely retest this, I believe, because remember, we're in a B wave in this instance, and you had to fill that gap eventually on the way down when you completed that larger flat correction. So you did retest it, but just not right then and there. Do you see what I mean? So eventually price did retest that crucial resistance that was broken. So I just wanted to point that out. So right when we bro broke resistance, we had a daily candle of 30% in Bitcoin. I don't think that is something that we, uh, that that should shock us really now let's go back to our regular chart guys and if you're getting value please like share and subscribe going back to our regular chart again just like we had here in our uh, 2019 example you had your a b base right two degrees of a b basing your first degree targeting wave four of the previous trend your b wave that's your first degree your second degree right here, A wave, B wave, your AB base is complete. That's your consolidation reversal. You started your impulse on July 13th right here. That's wave one, one, two, three, four, five. If you don't believe me, go into smaller time frames. You can clearly see five waves here. That's your wave two, right? And your wave three, again, under resistance, wave three, under resistance, it's muted. It's stunted. It's, it's, uh, it's a not... It's wave one of three, rather. It's not the full wave three, but your wave three starts under resistance. So everything is kind of concerted. And your wave two of three, right? So if this is primary, this is your intermediate wave one, intermediate wave two. And now you're going into intermediate wave three, but you're still under resistance. Once you eventually break this resistance, I do expect a daily candle, literally just one day, going in between this 24k and the 30k zone okay and i think the vpvr as i've said on this channel tells us the same story if you turn on your horizontal volume indicator you can see that there are very few orders very few buys and sells in this zone so whenever price does breach this important resistance expect it to fly 
And what is that percentage, right? That is approximately 20 to 30 percent, right? So this is something that we've seen historically. Guys, if you're getting value, please like, share, and subscribe. I don't see anybody doing this kind of analysis um, anywhere else on YouTube, right? Maybe it, it does exist, but I don't, I don't see it. All right. Now, so we have that. What are open orders doing? What are people thinking in terms of buying longs and shorts and all that stuff? Let's go into our Bitfinex open interest chart. Okay. Now we're on the daily time frame. Let's look at uh, the longs or actually let's look at the shorts first. Okay. Let's flip on the weekly time frame just to get a little bit of context. Looks like the shorts have been decreasing. They've been decreasing, right? And that, that makes sense. Just historically, shorts are going down because uh, these markets, these cryptocurrency markets uh, do go up and to the right in the aggregate. Now, on the daily time frame, ever since, let's see, May 12th, our orthodox low in, in on the charts, it seems like shorts have been decreasing in the aggregate, right? They really took a dive on May 12th and they've been consolidating to the downside, but it does seem like we're at a support level, an important support level, and that may break. If that breaks, that would coincide with our pump to the upside, right? So that's interesting. So we look at longs. What have longs been doing? Same thing, but opposite. Longs have been going in the opposite direction. They've been pumping. And it looks like they've consolidated, retraced a little bit ever since uh, mid-June. And you have this consolidation. And here you have some basing. It would make sense that longs take off if we do indeed break out today. So that's the Bitcoin longs and shorts. Ethereum interestingly enough the shorts seem to be well recently seem to have increased they they kind of skipped up here but again you seem to be at some sort of support right you've hit some sort of support here so this is smart money this is you know big players you know big money not everybody bids on Bitfinex. This isn't Bybit. This isn't KuCoin. This is like, you know, people with size. And they're, they seem to be having, uh, let's see, in the shorts, they seem to be at a support. So it shorts can go up from here, but they can also go down, right? This could be an intermediate support kind of an intra wave consolidation where you're not finished yet right so that's what i'm looking at at the shorts and ethereum longs they just seem to be really nuking so i don't know i have no idea looking at ethereum it's just it's it's anybody's guess but looking at the Ethereum chart, I think we still have some ways to go. I don't think it's hit its targets to the upside. So that's pretty much it for me. Hope this was helpful. Hope this was useful. Guys, have a great Sunday. Hope you're well. Take care. And I'll take, take see you tomorrow. The damage to begin. We can have it going there. Drums. We go get it dumb. Get it get crazy style. Late night. Hype the vision. We be moving with precision. With 10 spots popping off. Making some decision about hitting on one at a time with these L rhymes. My love at the door. Free drink.